Oxygenation. Basic nursing management and maintaining good oxygenation. Prepared by exam winners. Oxygen principles. The ABCs of prioritization, which is A for airway, breathe for breathing, and C for circulation. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where physiological needs is the first priority of needs, and oxygenation belongs to the physiological needs. Oxygen equipment and administration, common diseases and conditions that impair oxygenation, such as asthma, atelectasis, bronchitis, emphysema, left-sided heart failure, pleural effusion, pneumothorax, and pneumonia. Potential nursing diagnosis related to oxygenation would include an impaired tissue perfusion, ineffective breathing pattern, hypoxia related to impaired tissue perfusion. There are terms you need to familiarize, ABG, which is your arterial blood gases, PaO2, which is your pressure oxygen, pressure of carbon dioxide, and HCO3, which is your carbonic acid. Diaphragmatic breathing, dyspnea, hypercapnia, hyperapnea, hypoxemia, and hypoxia. This is now your responsibility to know what are these terms. Respiratory cycle is described on the time interval between two consecutive inhalations. Inhalation is the first stage of a respiratory cycle. It is determined by a positive flow in the airways. The respiratory volume increases when air goes in the lungs. Inhalation ends when the positive flow ends up to zero when your lungs is filled with air. Inspiratory pulse or plateau is the second stage of respiratory cycle. Inspiratory pulse is characterized by the period of a zero flow between the end of inspiration and the start of exhalation. Air volume in the lungs during this stage does not change. Exhalation is the third phase of a respiratory cycle. It is characterized by a negative flow in airways and therefore leaves lungs while the respiratory volume is decreasing. Exhalation end is characterized by the termination of a negative flow. The respiratory volume thus should decrease to zero normally. Period of rest. The fourth stage of a respiratory cycle is characterized by the absence of a flow in airways between the end of an exhalation and the beginning of inhalation of a following respiratory cycle. Duration of this period is very important as it allows us to estimate respiration rate resource. The normal. You can say that your patient has a normal oxygenation if the normal breathing pattern is okay. The respiratory rate is in between normal range. The pulse rate is normal. The normal oxygen saturation and patient is relaxed, not irritated or agitated, as irritation and agitation is a sign of a low oxygenation in the body. When oxygen is comprised, such as diseases of pump failure, pneumonia, pneumothorax, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary bronchial constriction, possible foreign body, asthma, atelectasis, bronchitis, emphysema, left-sided heart failure, and pleural effusion. There is a need for the nurse to make sure that your body has maintained a good oxygen level saturation. Oxygen equipment, you need to know your oxygen source. Where do you get the oxygen from? In most hospitals, they are already in oxygen tanks or pre-filled oxygen pipes. Oxygen delivery device and tubing. What sort of delivery device are you using? And how much is the flow rate that you are going to give to your patient? Do you need a humidifier and distilled water? If using high flow oxygen therapy 
or over 4 liters per minute by nasal cannula, you need to make sure that you've got a humidifier as this can irritate the membranes of your airways. And for sure, you need to have a no smoking sign because oxygen are highly flammable. Oxygen delivery devices includes nasal cannula, reservoir, simple face mask, partial rebreather mask, non-rebreather mask, venturi mask, aerosol face mask, mechanical ventilators, tea tube adapters, and face tents. Now here is a table for oxygen therapy. We've got the delivery systems, the flow rate, and the percent of oxygen they give to our body. Let's start with the low flow system. Normally, it is a hospital standing operating procedure, or hospital SOP, to give nasal prong oxygen to our patients who are in need of oxygen, like those patients who, who are in respiratory distress, those patients whose hemoglobin are low, those patients who are coming into the emergency department with um, respiratory distress. So we give oxygen by the nasal prong or nasal cannula. This gives 22 to 60 percent of oxygen and the flow rate is two to four liters of oxygen. So the maximum rate that we can give through a nasal cannula is four percent. Now there is an oxygen mask. The oxygen mask is 35 to 60 percent of oxygen and you can give it over six to ten liters per minute of oxygen. Their high flow system which is the face tint, it gives you less than 40 percent. The face tint can be given in 10 to 15 liters per minute of oxygen. So is the oxygen hood. However, the oxygen hood can give you more percentage of oxygen, which is 80 to 90 percent, normally used in pediatrics patients, and you can give it over 10 to 15 liters per minute. The oxygen tent can give you more than 50 percent of oxygen, and it can be delivered more than 10 liters per minute. Now we've got the partial rebreather and the non-rebreather mask. So the partial rebreather mask gives you 50 to 60 percent of oxygen and you can administer it to 10 to 12 liters per minute and the non-rebreathing mask with reservoir gives you 95 percent of oxygen and you can deliver it to 10 to 15 liters per minute and venturi mask gives you 25 to 60 percent of oxygen but it is mask specific and it is also variable when it comes to flow rate. So it will be based on your critical nursing or critical thinking as a nurse to decide which type of delivery systems are you going to give to your patient and it is also your critical thinking that will let us know on how much flow rate a patient needs. So these are the type of oxygen delivery systems. I've made an acronym. So N stands for the nasal prong. So you can see there's a prong there for the nose. And you have a face mask. You have the face tent, there's an oxygen hood, and it is normally used in pediatrics. You've got a non-rebreather and a partial rebreather and a venturi mask. So you can see, so you can see here that's a non-rebreather mask, and this is a partial rebreather mask. You can see the difference. They look the same. Both of them got reserve a bag where the oxygen goes straight to the reservoir. And when a patient breathes in, the oxygen they get is from the reservoir bag. However, when they breathe out, there is carbon dioxide. And with a partial rebreather mask, you can see 
exhalation ports. So this is where the carbon dioxide goes out. However, in a non-rebreathing mask, there is valves that stops the escape of oxygen. And the only, the only thing that co comes out through this valve is your carbon dioxide. And so the difference between a non-rebreather mask and a partial rebreather mask is how the oxygen is controlled and how the carbon dioxide are controlled. That's why in a, in a non-rebreathing mask, you get 95% of the oxygen because there is no escape of the carbon dioxide, wherein the there's no escape of carbon dioxide and oxygen, wherein the partial rebreather re mask, oxygen and carbon dioxide can exchange here. Therefore, the patient can still breathe in some carbon dioxide and oxygen can escape through here as well, wherein the patient couldn't get enough oxygen. While in the non-rebreather mask, oxygen couldn't come out through the valve because it's only for the carbon dioxide. And so other carbon dioxide outside the mask couldn't come in too because that valve seals the entry of, of any air. That is a Venturi mask, and that is a face mask.